Good morning, this is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit, and we're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And in fact, we're going to go ahead and do that today. We're working our way through St. Matthew's Gospel, uh, as we've been doing for the last several weeks. We're on the beginning of chapter 15, verses 1 through 20, is assigned for evening prayer. Once again, we see the Pharisees are trying to trip up Jesus, uh, and they come at him with one of the rules that is a part of the law, uh, or at least an interpretation of which found in the Old Testament. Uh, And so they come after him and they say, uh, why do the disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Okay, the tradition. Now, traditions can be a good thing. In seminary, we used to talk about uh, big T traditions and little t traditions. Big T traditions are things that are in embedded in the practice of the faith and help to point us to something bigger and more important. Uh, Small t traditions are things that we've been doing here for the last 10 years and nobody really knows why. Uh, So so here they come, the Pharisees say, why do they transgress the traditions of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, we know during Corona Tide how terribly important it is that we wash our hands. Uh, remember the 22nd rule, and they, the, you know, everybody said, sing happy birthday while you do it. And my recommendation is that you say the Lord's Prayer once or twice, uh, take up a good time uh, to wash your hands. So Jesus certainly is not going to overthrow the idea of cleanliness. And in fact, the Jewish belief in hand washing is probably what has saved them from various plagues that have come through uh, the Middle Ages. Uh, Oftentimes, the Jewish communities within European cities were not as strongly affected by various plagues. Part of the reason they think in hindsight is because they were regular about washing their hands when nobody else understood what germs were. So uh, certainly Jesus is not telling us to not wash our hands. So don't get, don't stop there. I know when I was a kid that was like, hey, I don't have to wash my hands. Jesus says it's not important. That's not at all the message in today's lesson. Uh, But uh, he goes on to talk about the fact that it's not what goes in the mouth that makes us unclean. And of course, ultimately, we'll be released from the dietary laws as well. Uh, We'll see that coming up in Acts of the Apostles, but this lays the groundwork for it um, because it has nothing to do with what goes into the mouth that makes us holy or makes us defiled. Jesus says it comes out of the mouth, right? And think about that because that's a reflection of who we are and who we're becoming. Um, So he said unto them, hear and understand not that which goes into the mouth defileth the man, but that which come out of his mouth. That's what defileth the man. Um, And so then the disciples come up to him and afterwards they said, okay, could you explain to us what you mean by this? Uh, And and Jesus said, well, are you yet without understanding? Do you not understand that whatever enters into the mouth goes into the belly and cast out in the drought? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile a man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat without unwashed hands defileth not a man. So what is Jesus saying here? As I joked a minute ago, we certainly should wash our hands for the sake of cleanliness and to prevent the spread of coronavirus as we're in the middle of all of that now. Uh, Ten years from now, we'll look back at this morning meditation, assuming YouTube still exists, and we'll say, why were they so worried about this coronavirus thing? Um, but right out in the middle of it, it's very important. But what Jesus wants us to understand is that who we are and who we are becoming is not affected by the food we eat. Now, okay, let, let's, let's go one step off to the left here, so my left, or off to the right, uh, and say that we certainly want to eat healthy food right? Uh, The standard American diet of processed stuff is not really good and healthy for us, and that's why we have such a huge prevalence of diabetes. But that's a story for another day and heart disease. Um, But rather, what Jesus is saying is when it comes to the spiritual life, what we need to do is to have a changed heart, a converted heart. Remember, he's addressing the Pharisees, and what is his constant beef about the Pharisees? They're doing holy things, but they're not letting it affect who they are. Right? We hear about the Pharisee, I thank thee, Father, I'm not like this other guy over here. And he's doing all the right things in the sense that he's tithing and he's fasting and he's saying his prayers. 
But the fact is, is he's comparing himself to other people and he's certainly not allowing the holiness to convert his heart. So Jesus says really what comes out of our mouth because that is a reflection of who we're coming, of becoming, who we are, right? It's a reflection of that. And he, and he goes through that list of all the terrible things that we could be, the fornications, the adulteries, uh, all of those sort of things. We want to allow the work we are doing Right? Not to earn salvation, but the work we're doing to become holier. Uh, and more importantly, the cooperation that we're doing with God the Holy Spirit to make us holy, we want it to be able to affect us in such a way that what comes out of our mouth is encouragement, correction when necessary, prayer, praise, thanksgiving, gratitude, all of those wonderful, good, and holy things, things that lead others to Christ as well. So, Yes, please wash your hands. But that's not what's going to lead you to eternal life. It's a converted heart that loves Jesus Christ. That's what has made us his, and that is his work. So I hope you have a wonderful Thursday, and may God bless you.